Hello everyone, and welcome back to The Road to 2000. As always, my name is Caleb Denby, and I will be your driver on this journey. Um, today, uh, I just explained to our in-person audience, we're doing something a little bit unorthodox. Rather than a normal lecture style thing, uh, we're going to be playing uh, a training game against Julian, who is at the front desk right now, uh, willingly uh, fighting me and the rest of the class in, in this game. So, the way this is going to work is pretty much in every turn, we're going to stop, take some time, uh, talk about our options, and see if we can come up with, with the best moves together, see if we can understand what's going on in the position. So, here we are. It's move one. Any suggestions? Yeah, pick him up. Uh, D4. All right, D4. I love it. All right, we're lucking out because I play that move. Here we go. Uh, Harrison says king e2. Uh, not yet. Not legal yet. Not yeah. legal yet, but maybe. Okay, and now it's on Julian, who hopefully sees that we made a move. Okay, he goes knight f6. So, of course, you know, knight f6 controls e4. We still have to decide what opening we want to play. So, let's throw out some options. We can go knight f3, go c4, we can go g3, all very normal. Uh, we could also even play the London, but let's not. <laughs> uh, so, what do you guys play? What do you, what do you want to play? Don't ask me. I'm like 1300 and I play the London, so don't ask you me. You play the London? Yeah. Oh my god. Alright, we can try the London. We can try the London. Okay. So what move order do you normally use to get into the London? Um, uh, bishop f4. Okay, we'll try that one. Um, so I think that the latest on this bishop f4 move is that maybe it's a little bit better to start with knight f3 sometimes, but here maybe it doesn't matter. Um, so d5, so we're playing the London. So what are the London moves? Yeah, knight f3, e3, uh, bishop develop, all in some order. So we'll, we'll go with knight f3 first. Always good to develop the pieces. I uh, go c5, attacking our pawn. So now what? Yes, e3 is the move that's first to mind there right away. Yep. Okay, at least. Um, yeah, I think you can go e3 or c3. Um, I'm going to play this move uh, e3 here. So, do you know what move is uh, sort of going to be uh, the biggest problem for us to deal with here, uh, with, with Black's setup of c5? Let's, let's start trying to anticipate what, what our opponent's up to. Uh, what could his idea be with this move c5, and, and what is his next move probably going to be to put on some pressure? Maybe c4. Okay, so maybe c4. Uh, any other ideas of what's going on? Well, I was thinking it was well, pressure on the center with knight c6. Yeah, so uh, I think that the idea with c5, more so than just gaining space with something like c4, is, is going to be to pressure our center. And it also actually opens up uh, a way of playing for black directly targeted against our early bishop development. So I think that that might be sort of the, the ideas that he's going for here. And that oftentimes revolves around this move queen b6. Now, how, how are queen b6 and bishop f4 related? Well, by leaving the queen side, our dark squares over here are going to be a little bit weak, especially if we block off our bishop with e3. Queen b6 challenges the center even further, and also, of course, targets our, our pawn on b2. So now that might not necessarily change our move here, but now we sort of have an idea of what, what black is, is up to. Yeah, the, the chat also says knight c6 and knight h5 are common ideas as well. All things to look out for. But I, I like your move E3, so we'll stick with that. But we just, just want to be aware of what's coming up, make sure we're not missing anything. Okay, so he goes knight C6 right away. So targeting our pawn some more. So keeping these moves in mind, queen B6, knight H5, uh, how should we continue? Do we want to do something over here? Do we just want to continue developing? And I would play C3, open up for the queen in case of... Um, B6, you know, B2, or, yeah, B2. yeah, C2 or B3? Okay. Could you consider C4? Uh, is it possible to do it? Um, you could consider it. I'm actually not up to date on my London move order trickery, but uh, I think probably C4 is, is not going to be quite right here, uh, because due to the way we've played in the London move order, black is actually... Uh, the one with the most pressure on the center right now. And so we're, we're not really prepared to open things up in the middle uh, because black already has this sort of lead in, in the fight there. 
Um, so I like C3, but what, what other moves might we uh, suggest here? Uh, knight D2, maybe, or... Yeah, knight BD2. Yeah, or bishop D3, maybe. Bishop D3. Yeah, all, all seem like normal moves. So uh, there is a London expert in the chat, it looks like. And yeah, he's pointing out a line that is useful to know. If c3, queen b6, uh, queen b3, then there's this annoying line with uh, c4. Uh, now, it's not really normal for black to give up the pressure on the center, but in this case, there's tactical justification. Uh, when we move our queen back, there is this bishop f5 move, uh, attacking our queen. And so if you're not following, we're saying c3, queen b6, queen b3, c4, queen c2, bishop f5. Now that bishop is hanging, so you can take it, but then black takes on b2, and our rook is, is sort of trapped. So we're going to avoid that line uh, by developing our pieces here. Now, that one is uh, sort of a difficult one to find over the board, so it's useful just to have that, that knowledge there. <clears throat> So we will just develop our pieces, pass the move back to Julian, let him decide how he wants to continue. Just d6. Okay. So what's next on our agenda? Well, there's still the thing to do with just bringing the bishop out and crossing. Yep, I totally agree. Uh, so we could bring this bishop out. Uh, the only other normal move I would say is probably like c3, but um, I, I like developing the bishop. Where where should we put this guy? Where does he belong? E2 is normal, but kind of passive. You could go maybe yep. b5. You could go to e2, you could go to b5, and uh, of course, what's, what's the third square? Uh, yeah, we go to d3. So how are we going to decide between these three squares for our bishop? Uh, what, what's going to... Influence your decision there. Well, it feels like it doesn't have a great future at the five maybe. Uh, again, uh, you don't really want to extend your bishop for a knight in principle. Yeah. So uh, it feels like you really you got a little time or or uh, soft bishop for a knight if you play the bishop in five room. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. You know, bishops are long-range pieces, and if you bring them out too far in the opening, uh, oftentimes they sort of get harassed. So if we, we did land on b5, probably a move like a6 at some point is going to be awkward for us to meet. Um, right, of course, we're not going to get our bishop trapped with, like, bishop a4, b5, c4. Um, but then at that point, you know, what are we doing on b5? And like you said, probably white's not super interested in, in trading it off for this knight. May maybe you can. But uh, probably that's not not plan A. So then D three or B or, or sorry E two or D three, which of, of these squares looks looks best? I feel like E three maybe or, or D three maybe invites C four. Yeah. Know. So this is something I wanted to point out. So D three looks you know optically like the better square, right? It's the more active square for the bishop. This is a great open diagonal to be on, but you do have to be ready to meet moves like c4. Uh, when after c4, I guess you would just have to retreat to e2. So can we improve our position somehow uh, so that bishop d3, the c4 move, isn't actually really going to be a problem? How could we improve our position to, to make this idea work? Uh, so b3 would be one way, but keep in mind what I said about uh, having this bishop outside the pawn chain. It's great to have this nice active bishop here, but it is going to make our dark squares weak on the queen side. So I'm really wary of playing a move like b3 when someday later on, you know, maybe this will get taken and then all of these squares are, are going to be holes for, for our opponent. Is e4 a move? e4? A little bit too much. I think all your pawns hang, right? Um, so what about this move c3? This was the idea I was sort of fishing for. So how does c3 help us with our, our plan to play bishop d3? It opens up c2. Yeah, it opens up the c2 square. So if we get pushed away, we can drop our bishop back along this diagonal, which I think is just a little bit more comfortable, right? We want to be on this long open diagonal. Uh, so I, I think I like the move c3 the best here. It also has the benefit of uh, shoring up our center. And after something like queen b6, you know, uh, we are sort of preemptively, prophylactically defending our, our pawn on d4. So let, let's go with that one to start with. Back to Julian. Okay, he takes. 
How do we want to take back? So many options here. And hello, Ben. I think I see that's Ben. Hard to see through the lights. Uh, yeah, I feel like that you need to keep a little more light in the position to unbalance the pawn search a little bit. So. Yeah. So what I would say is, if we take with the C pawn, we get that symmetrical structure um, that you would get from like an exchange slav or something. And we do have one benefit in that structure over our opponent. Our bishop is outside the pawn chain. So you might uh, be able to argue that uh, white could, could have some advantage there. But I'm going to say that at the same time, this knight on c6 is better than our knight on d2. Right? If we were going to go for that structure, we would want to develop our knight out to the most active square on the queen's side. Um, so now, knight takes obviously doesn't make any sense. It almost loses a piece even. Um, not quite, because e5 doesn't work tactically. But of course you want to keep a pawn in the center. You want to keep your central space. So because, you know, I think maybe this knight on c6 is better than this knight on d2, I think we should take with the e-pawn to have this uh, Karl's bad structure, as it's not. And here the point is just that, uh, you know, we're, we're not playing uh, symmetrically anymore. Okay, so knight h5, obviously attacks our bishop. What to do? What to do with this guy? Just to highlight the options, go to e5, g5, g3, e3, all four seem like moves worth considering. Maybe e5, just let's start with the trade. Okay. So here, yeah, of course, you, you want to be thinking about uh, what, what's your opponent's response going to be. So bishop e5 and g5 look sort of like the most attractive because they are you know advancing your piece rather than retreating um, but what is black's response going to be in in either case six. yeah he might he might even try this move f6 uh I'm, I'm not certain that that is actually his idea uh but this move f6 might actually look uh somewhat interesting uh, although it, it does sort of abandon this knight here on, on h5. So maybe let's try and calculate a little bit. Let's say bishop g5, f6. There's some way we can take advantage of this knight. Maybe go bishop h4. And I, I think our bishop looks fine over there, right? What, what would be wrong, wrong with this? I'm not so sure. So we could also go to, to e3. Of course, e3 would be the quote-unquote safe square. Uh, but you always want to be careful when you put your bishop on a square where it has no retreating moves. Uh, because if it gets attacked by a pawn, then oftentimes it's just going to be trapped. Uh, so bishop e3, for example, like I, I, it's just not so comfortable to have the, the bishop back here. It's sort of stunted by our own pawns. I think I would much rather uh, advance the piece. Um, so we're going to do that. I'm going to take the wheel on this one. Okay, so bishop g5 I think makes the most sense f6, so we saw this coming, now we can go back to h4 or e3. And on this one, I'm going to let you guys decide. I'm going to let you decide. No hints on this one. I like this. h4 is very better. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so why? This gets the protected knight that takes five. Uh, yep, pointing out this. Not the spread on g5. Uh, g5 is a bit like a black guy. Yeah, g g5 would be uh, would be a bit much. So I like this move h4, and, and again, um, I think it's better than e3 for the reasons that I sort of stated. It keeps the bishop a bit more active, and you know it leaves us with with some retreating moves as well. Okay, he comes with bishop d6. So finally, I don't think black made a threat. So since black doesn't have a threat. Uh, what, what do we want to be doing? Yeah, I, I think it's time to finish our development here. Um, so we would want to play something like bishop d3, right? Uh, but maybe black actually has a good move in, in response to this. What do we need to be uh, sort of afraid of here? I think black does have a good response. Yeah. I was thinking if we could play knight e5 now to the Yep. 
So you're, you're noticing that, okay, so why can't we play normally with bishop d3? Well, knight f4 is the big problem. Attacking our pawn and, and our bishop. So developing this bishop actually not going to be possible right now. So you're looking for ways to deal with that problem, which is good. But so knight e5 was your, your first guess. Uh, so that's a very forcing move. So let's go ahead and try, try to calculate what happens after knight, knight e5. Yeah, knight f4 anyways. And then it's back back to us. We've sort of put our knight in a precarious position. Um, of course, pawn takes not possible yet. Yeah, okay. So calculating here, knight e5, knight f4, we're thinking maybe knight d3. Uh, repositioning the knight, challenging black's knight on, on f4. Um, and then how, how do you think the line might continue? Useful to go a bit further on this one, I think. Yeah. So I, I agree that if black uh, exchanges there, then this line would actually be pretty nice for white, because we, we get our bishop out to d3 with no problems. But what if black goes back to, to g6? Yeah, so we have to play bishop g3 there. Yeah, bishop g3. And then how do you feel about that resulting position? I think we can kind of stop calculating at that point. We've played all the forcing moves, but what, what, what's going on in, in the position after bishop g3? Are we happy or unhappy? Well, our uh, bishop remains stuck at that one, so maybe... Very much. Yeah, that, that's, that's the point I'm trying to make, right? Our, our goal is to develop this bishop, and so right now we have a problem, knight f4. So knight e5 was a good first move to calculate, because it's very forcing. So you say, what happens after knight e5? Okay, knight f4, knight d3 can challenge that knight, uh, but then knight g6, bishop g3, and I'm not really sure how I'm, you know, developing my pieces. Maybe black, uh, as someone in the chat is pointing out, can even go e5 uh, very actively, just get the plan rolling. So how else can we try to solve our, our problem here on the f4 square? What else can we do? Yeah, it looks, looks tough. So I, I think there's a couple options here. Obviously, we don't want to play g3, because that, again, would, would sort of trap our own bishop. Um, maybe not immediately, but, but in the future that's going to be a big problem. Um, we could think about dropping the bishop back to g3, but then I think maybe knight f4 anyways. It's going to make it look a little bit awkward. So maybe there's, there's another way to finish development here, right? So we, we discarded this move bishop b5 earlier, but what happens after bishop b5 uh, now? Bishop b5 has a, a pretty big advantage here that's um, over bishop d3 and bishop e2. So what, what is that? So? Queen b6 and no worries. Uh, maybe, yeah. So we, we do need a response to queen b6. Uh, so what, what, what could we do? Our, our bishops attacked. What could be going on there? Obviously, if we play bishop a4, um, what, what was the, the big concern? Uh, queen, queen b2 is the concern. And then maybe we're actually not getting counterplay, right? You know, rook b1 doesn't seem to do much. All our pawns are, are kind of falling. So bishop b5, queen b6, we, we would need a good response to this move. But I think we do have um, at least a very reasonable reply. Yeah, so a4 is okay, but you're sort of only delaying the issue, right? A, a6 is going to come, and then your b pawn is still still in danger. So I think we have a move that defends both the bishop and the b-pawn. That could be, could be helpful. Yeah, I think just queen b3 there is fine. Then if a6, uh, what can we do? So we're saying bishop b5, queen b6, queen b3, a6. Maybe we didn't give ourselves enough time here. We might have to pick up the pace. <laughs> Yeah, I think bishop a4 is, is probably fine, to be honest. I think that's, that's totally fine. Um, nothing's hanging. If we get our queen captured, we can take back with the bishop. 
Knight f4, uh, we can castle. Uh, I think we're keeping it all together. So I think bishop b5 is the move that solves our problems the best in, in this position. Um, but just to show you, that's kind of the thought process we, we want to follow here. You know, what, what do we want to do? We want to develop our bishop. What's the problem? What does our opponent want? Oh, this knight f4 idea. And then you go down, you evaluate your options, you say, okay, why is this uh, move better than this move? How can I solve these problems? And that's how we arrive at, at our move here. Are we going to lose on time? I might be able to convince Julian to give us more time, but we don't want to run over the, the full hour, that's, that's for sure. And Julian is thinking for the first time here. So aside from queen b6, you know, black of course can just play a normal move. Black could, could castle. Black could, um, black could castle. That would be the normal thing to do. Not sure what other normal moves there would be. Uh, of course... A6, I thought Yeah, oh, so a6. Uh, I didn't mention this line, but what do you think our reply would be against that move? Yeah, we would want to come back this way, because again, these squares have a problem. Um, so castles, uh, of course, what do we want to do here? Yeah, we want to finish our development. Our opponent hasn't given us a reason not to, so we'll just castle. There's so, also line with the bishop takes 6 followed by 95 stuff? Uh, yeah. Um, the thing about this 95 move is you're correctly highlighting that we, we can play this move uh, because of the, the pin, but not sure the knight does enough on, on that square, to be honest. Okay, so knight f4 has been played anyways. So now we are sort of uh, finishing up our development, and we have to decide on, on what our plan is going to be for, for the game here. Black has sort of announced his intention with this move f6. Black is probably playing for this move e5 at some moment. So now we need to figure out where we want to put our pieces and, and how we want to organize. So the last thing to do, I think, is find spots for uh, our queen and our rooks. But at the same time, you know, of course, we want to keep an eye on what our opponent is doing. And probably, you know, find a safer home for our bishop on h4. It looks a little bit uh, out of place. So with those things in mind, what, what moves are coming to mind here? Let's come up with some candidates. One, yeah, rookie one, very, very natural move. Uh, targets the e-pawn, helps prevent e5. Uh, what else do we have? Also queen c2, I thought. Yeah, queen c2 looks very natural. Um, any other ideas? Yeah, bishop g3. I, I think these are, are probably three of the best moves here. So one thing I, I want to point out is like the, these pieces are sort of vulnerable right now. So the one thing I don't like about queen c2 is maybe after a6, we don't have the most comfortable places to, to put our bishop on b5. Right? We don't want to come back to d3 or e2 because of this knight. And if we come back to a4, well, then maybe our bishop actually wants the c2 square, and our queen is misplaced. So, uh, for those reasons, I don't think queen c2 is, is quite right here. Um, that being said, I think both rook e1 and bishop g3 are very good moves. Um, but with this point of this bishop on b5, I, I do think it's better to play rook e1 here, because now against a6, we can always just slide this bishop all the way back to f1, uh, where it will be sort of safe and sound, and once we are sort of ready for it later in the game, we can bring it out uh, very effectively. So rookie one, I think, is the way to go. Uh, but we're not forgetting about those other ideas we just talked about. I think bishop g3, queen c2, all very reasonable moves uh, in the near future. We also probably want to do something with our knight uh, from d2 as well. This piece does not make the, uh, the most... Uh, the, the biggest impression on the position. Okay, queen b6. So we can remember what was our intended reply going to be to this. Yeah, queen b3. 
So what what might our opponent have up his sleeve against Queen B3 now? He might have knight a5, right? Knight a5 because the king's no longer on on e8. So I guess we need to figure out what's going on there. Mm -mm. So Queen B3, Knight A5 is the only new problem, really. So how could we potentially deal with that? B4, maybe. Queen A4. Yep. So that keeps our bishop defended. Then maybe A6. Yeah, bishop d7, and it's starting to look a little bit scary for black. Uh, just a little bit scary. Maybe he just does it anyways, though. Maybe he just takes on b2. And what on earth is happening there? Well, actually, I guess we win a piece. We can take c8 and take this knight on a5. Right. Okay, so it looks like the tactics might work out in our favor here, but uh, important to, to notice our opponent's new, new ideas. Ah, and Julian is giving us more time. This is good. Okay, <laughs> we were going to need it. So I like this move, queen b3. Any other suggestions before we, we make the move? Any other ideas? Yeah, T tough to find one here, because if we just retreat, uh, I think black can and will uh, take our b-pawn. I think this time it matters. So we'll, we'll go queen b3. So now we mentioned this knight a5 idea. We also mentioned this a6 idea. Um, if just a6 first, then I think we can just retreat our bishop. Um, if the queens get traded, we're, we're not so unhappy here. And we can continue just slowly improving our pieces. Now, now that Julian's given us time, he's taking some time. If he gets slow on the clock, I will not be so generous. Uh, bishop d7. Okay, so uh, this move sort of passes the, uh, the buck back to us here. We can kind of, again, do anything we want. So we found a nice square for our rook. We activated our queen. Uh, what's left on our to-do list in the early middle game? How else, what other pieces do we need to, to improve? Yeah, so this rook on a1 isn't doing the most. This bishop on h4 also seems sort of oddly placed. You know, it was nice when this bishop was pinning the f-pawn to the queen. It's not even doing that anymore. Uh, so maybe we want to get this piece in the game, or this piece in the game. And lastly, our bishop is just a little bit loose on b5, I would say. And even, you know, mo on top of that, we also have this knight on d2, which is not leaving a, a stunning impression, right? Just sort of a, a passive piece. So of these four pieces, which one do we want to tackle first? Uh, which one do we have the clearest uh, idea for? Or the bishop on g3. Yeah, this bishop on h4, right? <clears throat> you know, I'm not totally certain where I want this rook. Uh, from a1 to go. Maybe, you know, a file will open somewhere and I'll need it on the c file. Maybe I'll want to double on the e file. Uh, maybe I, I want it on a1. Maybe if queen takes b3, a b3 gets played, my rook will be good here. So I don't know where this piece should go. Uh, I also don't see a, a super clean path uh, to improve this knight from d2 yet. Right, we can bring it to f1 and try to come this way or this way, but it seems a little bit odd. And lastly, um, I guess we could drop this bishop back to f1, but I mean, maybe our knight wants that square as well. Um, so of the four pieces, I agree. I think improving this bishop with bishop g3 is the, the easiest idea to play. Um, and that's, a, I think, a good method of finding ways to improve your pieces. You know, sometimes you don't know where pieces belong yet, and so you want to save those pieces for later, work on improving the pieces that uh, you do have clear ideas for. Ah! I blundered a tactic while I was talking about all these uh, important things. We're going to offer a take back. <laughs> all right. See, you guys were supposed to catch me on the tactics. Uh, so I said bishop d7 didn't make any threats, uh, but I was wrong. Knight a5, of course, now attacks our queen and our bishop. So remember that bishop f1 move that I was talking about? Maybe it's necessary here. Maybe it is necessary. So all right. We, we got a second life from Julian.
Got a second life from Julian. I just really thought he was developing his pieces. Missed his idea. No, it's it's not nearly enough, unfortunately. Uh, the knight? So you could trade this bishop for the knight, but oftentimes the, the bishops tend to be a little bit more powerful than, than the knights in positions like these. Um, and this likes for bishop especially is a really strong piece for white. Uh, if you picture this bishop ever getting out to d3, you can see it controls huge swaths of the board. Meanwhile, this knight on c6 is sort of hampered by, by white's pawn structure, right? Not a lot of advancing moves for this knight. So I, I think our bishop's a better piece. Um, okay, so takes. We now have two options. So which one uh, appeals to you guys? And the knight improves his position, but the a pawn also opens up the a thought. Right, so so that's the dilemma. Do we want to bring our knight to b3, and I don't know, maybe look at a square like c5, or do we want to change our structure here? Do we want to take with the a pawn, uh, giving ourselves, I guess, double pawns, but opening up this rook along the a5? <coughs> so maybe we can take a vote. Who thinks uh, knight takes? Two votes for knight takes. Three votes for knight takes. A, a tentative third. And I guess that leaves you two are in favor of Pontix? Alright, not sure. Not sure. Uh, the chat room does seem to favor Pontix. So I, I do think we should take with the pawn here. In general, um, you know, you're told not to double your pawns, but opening up this rook is going to be really, really nice. And with knight takes, uh, I don't think we're ever actually landing on this c5 square. It's hard for white to control the square enough times. Now, I do think that this improves the knight, and maybe we do have a path forward through c1 to d3, with this idea that, that kind of got brought up earlier. Um, but uh, I think pawn takes here is definitely going to be going to be the way to go. Uh, on top of that, we're also going to be able to maybe play a move like b4 someday and, and bring our knight out. So <coughs> it looks like Julian was aware of our potential idea to play this move b4 and immediately uh, lashed out with a5, stopping that in its tracks. Uh, so okay, this time for sure, Julian has given us sort of a free move to do whatever we want. So how do we want to improve our pieces? Yeah, uh, I'm on board with that. We'll improve our bishop here to g3. Nice and simple. Okay, g5. Black is really coming for us. So, this last move is, was pretty volatile, right? Whenever you see a big change in the, in the structure like this, uh, you should always sort of take a moment to evaluate uh, what, what kind of options that gives you, what, what this changes in, in the position. So with this pawn on g5, what sort of ideas are, are coming to mind now? We might want h5, h4. Yeah, black might want to try to trap her bishop, something like h5, h4. And we're getting even more time. All, all the generosity from people. Uh, any ideas for white that come to mind now that this pawn's out there on g5? Yeah, our knight might get a little bit stuck on h4. Okay, so h3. Uh, stopping g4 and giving, you know, I guess both of our pieces, the, the h2 square, could make some sense. Um, there's one more idea I want to highlight with uh, this pawn out here on g5. So whenever they push a pawn sort of in front of their king like this, sometimes it creates um, a hook. So g5, I think, is kind of a hook. What, what's the, you know, traditional way to, to latch onto that hook? I'm not saying it's the best move, but it's a move worth yeah, considering. Uh, H4 is possible, yeah, H4 is a move you always want to consider whenever you see a move like G5. Whenever they're uh, 
pushing a pawn, uh, especially two squares like this in front of their king, you want to look at, you know, putting the pawn's intention, uh, giving yourself the option to, to open things up. So h3, I think, is a fine move, and there's not much to calculate there, right? Just, just an, a normal looking move. Um, h4, uh, I guess we should probably calculate a little bit. So what, how, how would play potentially continue after h4? Because we are making a threat to take on g5 twice and, and win a pawn. Yeah, so h4, g4, um, attacks our knight. Our knight actually only has one square on h2. Um, but now that, in turn, attacks the pawn on g4. So the line sort of continues. What might black play? Yeah, black might play h5. And, and then the question is, uh, how do we feel about our knight on h2? Is this actually going to be uh, a reasonable piece for us or not? Um, and I think you guys are right. The answer probably is, is no. We, we don't like our knight here. Maybe one day it gets back into the game through f1, but that doesn't look so fun. So I think I do like this h3 move. I think this is a, a good way to play. And the chat is losing faith in our position. <laughs> they say our position's a mess. It's tough to find peace coordination. Well, that's what we're working on here. We're working on improving our pieces. I guess we can consider very well with C bar, but yes, yes. So let's try perhaps. Yeah, so we've played a lot of moves to, to sort of secure a position, get our pieces on squares that make sense. So now it is useful to look for changes in, in structure. So you mentioned this move C4. Um, so that comes with the upside of, of challenging black center. Of course, what's the downside to this move? Yeah, B4 becomes a big hole, and we're, we're losing um, control over uh, sort of our double pawns. They're, they're becoming sort of true weaknesses. So now I'd like to point out this knight on d2. I think I've I finally found a reasonable plan for this knight. So where where can we go with this guy? How could we possibly improve this piece? Yeah, I think that b1 to a3 is actually a very reasonable path. We can then land on the b5 square, which our opponent has made some weaknesses on. Uh, our bishop on f1, by the way, still coming in kind of handy, targeting uh, the b5 square as well. So I like that. We'll go knight b1. So on every turn here, we're just thinking, you know, what can we do to, to improve our position? How can we improve our pieces? Now Julian, on the other hand, is clearly gaining some space on the king side. Well, maybe he'll actually continue with something like f5, g4. Uh, he did just play h6, so I think it'd be a little bit weird to see the move h5. Um, and other than that, you know, he still has these ideas of potentially pushing in the center with e5 that we need to be aware of. Uh, and I, I think that sort of does it for, for Black's plans here. I think e5 is this big idea that uh, Julian is relying on. And, and there it is, e5. So how are we meeting this? This is Black's big break. What can we do? What can we do? There's really only two options, right? Either we take or we ignore it. So what do you guys think of this? We have to take it because we don't like e takes d4. You don't like e takes d4, so you want to capture. Okay. Any other thoughts? No? Okay. So what if I told you that there might be a tactical resource here for white after ed4? So if we, we don't take, then you know, what is the next step in our, our plan that we were doing? Knight. Yeah. knight a3, right? Well, this is what we sort of wanted. Then after takes, maybe we have a little bit of a tactic there. I'm not 100% certain it works, but... Uh, okay, rook to d1. So 
if we bring the A rook, actually, then then I think takes starts to get really bad for us because our pawn is overworked, right? Defending our knight and our, our other pawn. I think maybe we have this move knight b5, hitting the bishop and, and the pawn on d4. So I, I thought this line was worth looking at. So we hit both of these pieces. Uh, black, if they want to defend their pawn, would go to, to c5. They just retreat. And I think just knight takes, knight takes, knight takes. Totally fine for us. So knight a3 takes here, bishop c5. And then we can take. And now if black wants to sort of mess up our structure, it comes at a pretty big cost of the dark squared bishop, which is a, a pretty big piece for, for black to be missing here. So that, I'm going to say, is an option for us, if we so desire. Uh, now, that being said, what is the, the downside to taking on e5, if there is one? Opens up the rook down. Yeah, it, it opens up this nasty looking rook on, on the f file. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, that's actually sort of terrifying. I think we're going to get into a lot of trouble if we open up that rook. I think knight h3 tactics are already going to be in the position, and you have to be very, very careful. Um, so, what do you think? Knight a3 or d takes e? Yeah, I sort of, sort of led you on this one. I like knight a3. To be honest, though, it, it looks very complicated. d takes e might, might very well be the better move. Uh, I'll leave it up to you guys here. One vote for knight a3. Any dissenters? Mm. Yeah, okay. Pawn takes. Alright. Any tiebreakers? Alright, well then I'm breaking the tie. Uh, we'll, we'll play knight a3 this time. So now, what can black do? You know, black of course can still go after uh, this e takes d sort of line. Can also try to push e4, maybe e3 later. Uh, and with rook to e8, maybe that's what he's, he's hinting at. Um, so now we have two options, I guess. We can bring our knight to b5, hitting this bishop. We can come back to c2, trying to take a more defensive posture, defend our d-pawn, maybe come out with knight e3, those sorts of ideas. What do you guys think? I'm yeah, all right, we'll, we'll go to b5. We'll be active. Be active. Yeah, he goes all the way back. And what's our follow-up? What can we do? Um, I'm worried about his knight going to the 3 Now we've got that covered. We've got that covered. Let's just see. So I think it's time to, to start calculating here. Um, lots of tactical ideas in the position. So the downside of g takes e that I mentioned is that after pawn takes, it opens up this rook on the f file. There is actually also a very big upside to taking on e5. So, so what is that? What is that upside? How would that benefit us? <clears throat> This exchange of pawns. Yeah, so just like, you know, how f takes opens up the f file for black, d takes opens up the d file for, for white. So it gives us access to this d pawn. So I'm thinking, you know, maybe we can bring a rook to d1, try and prepare this. We can also just capture right away. Uh, but if we capture right away, after takes takes, you have to be thinking about uh, these moves like knight takes h3. You have to be ready to, to respond to them. Yeah, I was thinking maybe I could give that pawn and play king h2 if they have a rook on d1 already. Um, yeah, okay. So you're thinking takes takes, rook d1, knight h3, king h2. Um, we're actually still not threatening to capture this knight. Um, but we are on, on the d pawn. So, I mean, how, how might play continue there? Looks complicated, right? Looks very, very complicated. Yeah, to be honest, um, I'm not so sure. No, he has knight takes f two. Yeah, knight f two, right? Uh, so knight f two, bishop f two, and you're saying um. Well, that's what's... You're saying e four is check, maybe? 
is the problem. Yeah, yeah, e4 is, is check, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, could, could, could cause us some problems. So if we do take, take, maybe we do have to deal with knight h3 somehow. Maybe we do have to deal with knight h3. So what are our options to deal with that? So maybe we can defend our knight, or maybe we can move our knight. I mean, king h2, I actually don't think solves our problem. I think knight takes h3 is still in the position, even though mm -hmm. if, even if it's not check. Yeah. So I'm thinking maybe we go something like rook e3 and just defend this knight. Um, either we can do that right away, or we can take first. Now, my concern is if, if we don't take, black might go for this idea of e4. And so we have to be uh, at least willing to, to play that position as well, which could be tough. So I am a little bit scared of this e4 idea. So I think we, we do need to capture this guy. So anybody against capturing? No. All right. By, by default, maybe, yeah. So I, there were other options. You could go rook d1, you could go rook e3. You could keep it a bit more closed. But I think it is time. I think you guys are right. When it's time, it's time. We could swap off that uh, knight and play against d1. We could also just snag this knight off the board. That's exactly right. Um, so how, how does that look? Uh, bishop takes knight. How would black reply? Starting open. Yeah, it's starting to look a little bit weak. <laughs> Take with the e-pawn, you think? Um, yeah, I actually think that Black's position really revolves around this e4 idea. Uh, he wants to, to sort of break through in the center like that, get those pawns rolling. Uh, so in this case, I think the adage capture towards the center remains true. I think Black wants to take with the g-pawn, take towards the center. And then again, I think these ideas of e4 and f3 to follow are, are going to be a little bit frightening for, for white to deal with. So I'm not super in favor of, of actually capturing this knight. Now, what about this move, rook to d1? What was our... Well, we had a problem with it, though. What was the problem? That's true. Knight takes h3. Uh, however, we didn't calculate maybe the most obvious move. What, what happens if we take, take the knight? Yep, so black gets the piece back on, on f3. And then do we have any good follow-ups there? Yes, if we take the ball on d5 there, then he has bishop e6 on us. Bishop where? Bishop e6. Bishop e6? Yeah, sure. Bishop e2, maybe. Um, instead of rook takes? Yeah, we could go bishop g2, hitting this rook. And then maybe, actually, yeah, we do have bishop takes d5 with check there. That looks kind of interesting. Um, so I think I actually like this line for us. I think that's the best we're going to get here. I think we, we get into trouble. So why don't we, we give, it a go, give it a go here. Go to the one. And we only have about 10 minutes left in the class. So, so we got to go fast. Got to go fast now. That's okay. This has been a good exercise so far, I think. D4. Yeah, so c4, I think, um, runs into a problem where black can sort of sidestep us and get those pawns rolling again. Like Black's, black's ideas are to sort of come down the board, to, to come after us. So bishop e6 is simple enough, just defending the pawn. Um, so how can we improve? I'm asking myself just as much as you. <laughs> uh, how can we improve? Uh, maybe if we had to pick a, a worst piece here, this knight on b5 is, is very active, but it, it doesn't really contribute to the attack on the center. Uh, our bishop also, of course, leaves something uh, to be desired. Uh, so maybe we can just shore up our position the move like king h2. What do you guys think? Any other ideas? Bad, uh, bishop, bishop of h2, but yeah. Well... 
Moving this pawn is always going to be really scary, because black has a lot of attackers uh, on h3 here. It's certainly not a lot. Oh, you're exactly right. So now knight h3 is a threat again. I, I don't know how I already forgot this. Um, but maybe it's not such a big deal again, right? Takes, takes, rook f3, uh, bishop g2. And if the rook moves again, we can take on d5. And if the rook doesn't move, we can win an exchange, which might not be the most impressive thing of all time, but it, it is an exchange. So I think I do like this move, king, king to g2. And then maybe we can work on rerouting this knight uh, somewhere else. Actually, I'm, I'm not sure where. Uh, I think a good alternative might be knight to h2, trying to do something similar. Um, and other than that, I'm, I'm really not seeing a lot of, a lot of moves here for one. So let's, let's take a pick. Do we want to go knight h2, heading for g4, or king h2, just trying to solidify? Well, knight to g4 is going to force the bishop to come to the well, I, I'm not so sure it's forced, right? Black could just defend his pawn. Just leave the knight there. Alright, let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. And the best part about knight h2 is now it's our opponent's turn. Okay, so h5 uh, pretty quickly. So this move... Kind of makes a threat, right? Kind of threatens h4 when we're not so, so happy about this trade still. Or maybe we are. Maybe we are. Uh, however, this does take away knight g4, right? Yeah, we can go h4, but then we get this g4 structure, which, uh, I mean, I wasn't so happy with, right? It, it makes her not in h2 look very, very silly. Bishop b2. Bishop where? Uh, bishop e2? Yeah, uh, I, I'm not so happy about uh, giving this bishop up for, for the knight, right? We, we've been leaving this knight here, it's been, it looks pretty annoying, but... Yeah, I, I think I actually like that idea, Ben. I think this is a good one. So, we've provoked h5, and now this pawn on g5 is, is actually hanging. So we can just bring the knight back and, and attack this again. I think this is... Uh, I mean, it's a simple way to play, but I think it's it's a, not a bad way to play at all. And back to Julian. So how can he deal with this pawn? Maybe he can play g4. And how would we want to reply to that? Uh, yeah, we can go knight g5. Um, uh, first things first, though, we, we probably don't want to allow g takes h3. So I think we should always be capturing on g4, unless anyone disagrees. All right, let's do that. Oh, uh, bishop takes. Okay, so now he's pinning our knights. Scary stuff. Uh, however, this leaves the d-pawn behind. So we do have the option of capturing on f4 and capturing on d5, if you guys so desire. Do we desire? Yeah, yeah let's do it. Let's go get him. Let's go get him. And maybe he missed it. Maybe he didn't. Okay, we'll follow through. We'll see what his uh, his point is. Let's see what the idea for him was against this. He might just take us, take our pawn. No, he comes back. Comes back with bishop e6. So we're under attack. Where to go? Where to go with the rook? Rook d1, you said? d2 or d1, okay. Um, yeah, I, I like d2. Let's keep our options open for doubling rooks somewhere. Also, you know, we're anticipating bishop b3, so we don't want to, to put a rook on, on freeze. Bishop d3 is deadly. Yeah, so bishop d3 looks like a, a pretty nice move. However, I think we have a nice little tactical opportunity here once again. Um, 
to sort of rescue this knight from no man's land over here on b5. So I mean, it was, it was nice on b5, it, it misplaced some of our opponent's pieces, but it's not really contributing in the center, and so I, I really would like to take any opportunity to get it back in the game. So what, what am I talking about? What, what opportunity? Yeah, yeah. I, I like knight d4. Bam, we hit that guy, we hit that guy, you cannot take because the rook on, uh, on e8 hangs. Okay, bishop f7, defends the rook. So now what was, uh, what was the point of our knights, our knight adventure? We could come back, but I, I think we should take. I think this, this must be the point. The instruction I've seen is generally backing up this yeah, um, I mean, your pieces are going to be more active further in, in the position. Although sometimes yeah, retreating well, moves can be... Yeah, well, we, we came back in order to go forward, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, it's tough to say that retreating moves in general are bad. It, it, it is a game of specifics. Okay, now we have successfully given our opponent four pawn islands to deal with. Um, so what do we want to do? What do we want to do now? Yeah, we could just double up here, target this guy. Um, let's try to anticipate what our opponent would do in, in reply. Yeah, maybe bishop c4 hitting us. We would, would go rook e3. Uh, and actually, that that looks pretty good for us. That that line specific. Yeah. 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 We we've got some nice threats there. Um. So, I think after rook e two, uh, black might just play this move. Um, pawn to e four, and then again we have to decide what's going on. We can go knight g five, but then maybe bishop uh, g six is good enough to defend. And then actually the line kind of continues. We have like f3 ideas, but there's bishop a7 with e3 to come. Looks complicated. What about rook d7? Rook d7? That looks like a very good normal move. I have no problems with rook to d7. Um, I think we have a lot of options. This move knight g5 also stuck out to me, just to try to reroute this knight uh, in front of this pawn. But I think I like your move rook d7. And since it is supposed to be the class playing Julian and not me. We'll, we'll, we'll go with that one. Okay, and only three minutes left. So, both in the class and on our clock. A bishop b6, rook's attacked. We kind of want to stay on the 7th, so let's go to b7. And now I might just have to start taking over a little bit. Because we, we are dangerously close to being totally out of time. <laughs> so, rook b7, uh, still targeting this guy, keeping the rook active, and we're, we're hitting the e5 pawn as well. Uh, I do think that you guys are on the right track with stuff like bishop d3. I think we need to activate this guy, and d3 looks like a great way to do it. Makes that piece work in combination with our, our rook. Again, this move knight g5 is sticking out to me as well. Okay. Our guy is attacked. So I could go to g5. I'm actually going to come back to d2 instead, though. Uh, the reason being, it looks safer. <laughs> c5 makes a threat. Thankfully, I noticed. I did notice this time. So I'm going to move my rook away from the threat of capture. That looks good for us. Looks very good. Hard to keep track of four pawn islands, I would say. Very difficult for black. Okay, I will take. And if I take this guy, I think the idea was bishop b6. Um, I can take here, you can take here, I move, I get checkmated. That doesn't sound like fun, so I'm not going to do that. Not going to do that one this time. Nearly got me. Nearly got me. Okay, bishop back to d5. 
I think it's time to harass this Rook a little bit. This Rook's been in my face for far too long. And I'll make it move again, hitting, again, uh, another weak pawn. And let's kill our opponent's bishop's pair. Bishop pair, far too strong. So we'll take rid of, we'll get rid of that. And we'll bring this knight to e4. Oh, what a beautiful piece. What a beautiful piece. And resigns! We did it! We beat the master! We beat Julian. So I am running out of time here, but let's quick, quickly do a computer analysis, see if either of us missed anything ridiculous. Looks like we were getting outplayed for most of this game, and at some point it took a turn. So uh, I'm not sure what the theory says on these kinds of things. Looks like this is a line, maybe not a very good line. Ah, I was totally wrong. Bishop e3 is the best move here. So uh, I was a little bit wary about bringing the bishop back to a weak square, but we came out to g5, and this has also been played. Now bishop b5, and black is a little bit better because of the big center. It looks like everything we did made a lot of sense. Um, let's see what the computer thought about this, this decision. Let's see what it thought. It thought it doesn't matter. Both moves, very good. Um, although it does like knight b3 a bit better. So I guess you guys, you guys were, were right. Oh, no, they're back to, to being the same. All right, about the same. And a5, I thought made sense by Julian. I like this h3 move by you guys. And then... Uh, knight b1. I, I think this was a nice maneuver, and it didn't change the evaluation, so it seems like we're on the right track. And then, yeah, someone in the chat thought that e5 was a little bit premature. It seems like the computer agrees. And actually here, the computer is suggesting that potentially we can take or actually go c4. So maybe our plan with knight a3 was a little bit too slow. Maybe we did need to act in the center. And then just quickly going through here, d e5 is the best move. You guys are too smart. Uh, and then DEFE, rook AD1, this should be 6. Knight H2 was not so good. Uh, turns out we do need to go C4, as someone mentioned. I was worried about this move D4, but maybe we can get some kind of blockade going. Said Knight H2, and Knight H5 was the way to punish us, just hitting our bishop. Instead, though, after H5, we can come back, and then things are not at all bad for us after bishop takes. Now we just sort of take over. Yeah, this move Knight D4 was kind of nice. Apparently knight d6 is a lot better, but by this point we were moving pretty quickly. And here the bishop's pair was supposed to be enough for equality, but we started targeting all those pawns, and then it got very, very difficult for, for black. And then, wow, knight e4, hitting everything. So sad for, for black. So thanks to uh, Julian for playing and also giving us like an hour of extra time and a take back. <laughs> uh, the take back helps. Uh, we missed a pretty simple tactic early on, but we did manage to, to come back, and I think we played a really nice, interesting game here, where Black was trying to push through the center. We kept fighting to improve our pieces, to challenge him in the center. Hopefully you guys liked this sort of uh, format for a class. I, I don't think I'm going to do this often, but I do think it could be fun to bring this in every once in a while, uh, play a game together, talk about all the ideas, and see it through start to finish. Uh, so if you guys have time, please do stick around. Our Grandmastered Residence, Romain Edouard, is coming in right after me, and he'll be talking talking some more chess. Uh, as always, my name is Caleb Denby, this has been The Road to 2000, and I'll see you guys next time.